Welcome to Geothermal University. I'm Jeff Johnson. Our topic today is compressor troubleshooting. The utmost care should be taken to properly diagnose a suspected failed compressor. A compressor is often referred to as the heart of the system. It must be understood that related components and system malfunctions initiate compressor failures. For this reason, many times the compressor is compared to the human heart. So when a compressor does fail, the failed compressor is very likely a symptom, not the cause of the system malfunction. Compressors fail from improper design or application, liquid entering the compressor, causes of liquid entering the compressor include flooded start, flooding, liquid or oil slugging, loss of lubrication, incorrect piping, contaminants, overheating, electrical problems. Misdiagnosis is not good for business. If a compressor failure is suspected, the application must be reviewed to assure a successful diagnosis, repair, and recommissioning of the geothermal heat pump. It is important to find the root cause of the compressor failure rather than simply installing a new compressor. A leading manufacturer found fewer than 5% of compressors failed due to manufacturing defects. In addition, they found 28 to 35% of return compressors are misdiagnosed and not defective. So if you do not uncover the cause of the failure, the replacement compressor will also fail. If the breaker is tripped, troubleshooting should begin with the power off. Remember, if the breaker is tripped, it is a clue, and only after checking the unit should power be restored. You'll want to follow these steps. Before resetting the breaker, check all wiring for worn insulation, rubbing wires, and expose wires to ground. Do not reset the breaker until these steps have been performed. Visually check all components including run and start capacitors, contactors, relays, and terminals. Look for swollen run capacitors and burnt terminals or wires. Remove the molded plug from the compressor and inspect the plug connections. Look for any damage, such as overheating to the plug. Inspect terminals on the compressor for signs of damage. Next, we'll check the compressor for a shorted winding. You can measure each terminal to the ground wire or the compressor shell. If you choose a compressor shell, make sure you scrape away a little paint. There should be a zero or infinite resistance from each terminal to the compressor shell or ground. If you have any reading or continuity to ground, it is a shorted compressor. The compressor must be replaced. If the compressor passes the short test, we'll then check the motor windings. Remember, the measured resistance will vary from unit to unit. First, we'll measure resistance between the compressor terminals R to C. This reading should be the lowest of the three measurements. You should find a very low resistance from R to C. So low sometimes techs mistake it for a shorted winding. Next, measure resistance from S to C. This reading will be the mid-range of the three readings. There will be a much greater resistance from S to C. Last, we'll measure resistance from R to S. This reading will be the highest reading of the three. Resistance between R and S will equal the sum of the other readings. Resistance should vary from unit to unit. Next, we'll test to see if the internal overload is open. The internal overload is between R and C and S and C. If both readings indicate infinite resistance or no ohm readings, and there is a normal resistance between R and S, the internal overload is then open. Place your hand on top of the compressor. If the compressor overheats or draws high current, the overload protector should be open. You should never have infinite resistance between R and S. If you have open windings between R and S, you must replace the compressor. This is important and bears repeating. If when you measure infinite or no resistance from R to C and from S to C for both measurements and normal resistance between start and run, the compressor internal overload is open. The compressor may have overheated or high current draw has caused winding overload to open. It will likely reset after cooling. If all the above tests are okay, the compressor could have seized or locked up. We'll check for that shortly. If all these steps are negative, the breaker can be reset. We'll proceed to procedures under breaker not tripped. For these steps, restore high voltage, but do not place a call for heat or cool. 
If the breaker is not tripped, follow these steps. There should be no call for heat or cool. Check voltage on line side of the compressor contactor, which is L1 and L2. Single phase compressors are rated 208230. Voltage must be within those specifications. That is over 187 volts and less than 253 volts. With this molded plug removed from the compressor, energize the unit and check voltage on the load side of the compressor contactor, T1 and T2 terminals. This confirms contacts and contactor is good. If the contactor closed, measure for voltage on the molded plug between CNR and CNS. With the compressor not running, volts between CNS and CNR will be line voltage. If the run capacitor is good, you will not read voltage between CNS on the plug. Many times when a capacitor fails, it swells or bulges, but not always. We'll check the compressor run capacitor with a capacitor tester. The MFD should be within 5 or 10 percent, plus or minus. Most capacitors have tolerances printed on the label. Remember to bleed off voltage before touching terminals. You can use your meter to bleed off the voltage. Use caution. Start capacitors require much more time to bleed off voltage. Disconnect power and reattach the molded plug. If all these tests did not uncover a failed component, the compressor may be seized or locked up. If all the components have been tested electrically and visually, attach an amp meter, reapply power and start the unit. If locked rotor current, usually five to five and a half times running load amps is measured and compressor does not start, it is probably the compressor is seized or locked up. The internal winding overload should open very quickly. Reminder, if high starting amperage or locked rotor amps is measured, failed start components will give appearance of a locked or seized compressor. Double check run capacitor and any start components before replacing the compressor. Once again, if all components test good, replace the compressor. If the compressor has failed and must be replaced, a good cleanup is important. Recover the refrigerant according to the EPA guidelines. Check the refrigerant or oil with an approved acid test kit and always install a new filter dryer anytime the refrigerant circuit is open. If the compressor starts and runs, other components should be checked. If the compressor overheated, you must find the cause of the overheating. You should check the current draw, compare to manufacturer specifications, check the TXV, superheat, power supply, and anything else that can cause a compressor to overheat. If the compressor is a three phase, it is important to measure each leg to check for voltage imbalance. If the compressor is two stage, you should confirm the unit is going into second stage. The components for shifting to high stage vary from each manufacturer. In this model, 24 volts AC is supplied to the second stage rectifier plug from one on the ECM board. With the rectifier plug removed, you should read 15 to 24 volts DC on the plug female receptacle. Remember, fewer than 5% of compressors fail due to factory defects. A careful inspection of the complete system must be made, otherwise the replacement compressor will also fail. Thanks for watching Geothermal University.